All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbeen.com. Welcome to one more show. I hope you had a great weekend and welcome to the very first thing I'm doing on this Monday. So uh, really glad that we are talking. The uh, I want to start off with the with India. There is a crisis in India that is going on. There have been so many uh, cool beans who have uh, uh, shared over the weekend. Number one, the vaccine is not available anymore. There was a news as well that uh, AstraZeneca or Serum Institute, I believe, they are out of the vaccine doses. Vaccine was already, I believe, 60 or 65 and above, and even it is not available for them. People have their first dose, and then there is no second dose available. Uh, similarly, the cases are continuing to rise and going up rapidly. I had said at one point uh, that my thought was that as people would see that the cases are going up, they would start uh, controlling them, their their behavior, their interactions, their mask, their social distancing. But it looks like with the few activities in the early part of this uh, year, there are a lot of people who are infected and the new variants is spread faster as well. So the situation now is that um, ICUs are not available, beds are not available. It is just a crisis at this time. The other interesting thing, interesting from this point of view, that this is a solution that can be probably uh, solved is the ivermectin side, that it seems like ivermectin is not being used that much anymore. And or maybe the previous news of ivermectin being widely used were not correct. Either way, there is some issue. And there are, I was just reading Dr. Sumit's comment here. So let me actually start with his comment and uh, bring him in the discussion as well. So Sumit Kesare, Kesare, I hope I'm pronouncing your name co correctly. And I think that you are a physician. In India, somehow ivermectin not accepted as IC50 in the lung is not achieved by prescribed dose. Dr. Corey had mentioned with the study, it is sufficient. India believes many studies are against your view. So I'll give you two answers. Number one, many, many studies have been done afterwards, which have used therapeutic doses, recommended therapeutic doses of uh, 150 microgram per kilogram body weight to 200 microgram per kilogram, or even slightly above, for example, 300 or 400 microgram per kilogram. The FDA over here is doing the trial with, I believe, 400 microgram per kilogram body weight for three days. I think that is not the right approach. But they, that is what they're doing. So the, the point is, the dose, nobody has seen the IC50 happening in every patient. So the important thing is, number one, these therapeutic doses have been shown in clinical studies now that they are working. So that is one. And the second is the experience. The expertise of the doctors is showing that it is working. So it is kind of uh, disingenuous. This is kind of cheating to uh, pick up that original Cali study and say, because he used a very higher, a high quantity, we cannot establish the same quantity in the body. That means that study is invalid. His point of, I believe, higher quantity was one of the point was to see where is it the toxic, where are the toxic levels? And what they proved was that even if you give it in that high of a quantity, the toxic, the cells were fine. That was the basic point of it. So, so many doctors, so many studies after that have used therapeutic doses and that should work. This is just being incorrect. And believe me, for example, in the case of US, we say over here that our authorities want us to be vaccinated and that is why they're preventing everything else. However, in uh, countries like India, who have been wise from the get go that they use hydroxy, they used zinc, they, I think they should continue to work with ivermectin and similar uh, vitamin Ds and uh, hydroxy and others to save lives at this time. It is important. I was, I had been thinking the whole weekend that what is the way to campaign in the India somehow to figure out to continue to give ivermectin. So uh, I want to continue uh, on India a little more. For example, this morning, one of the cool bean, you all are actually aware of him. I don't want to name him. But he said that uh, his, so he's a young, young man. And he said his class fellow, 
he said that uh, his batchmate class fellow died and how rapidly that is what shocked me was the, over here i'm just reading his uh, message uh, today i also learned that my batchmate at college in india we lived in neighboring rooms in the dorm in kanpur died last week from covid he was not overweight overweight was quite fit though had been smoking in college not sure if he continued that after graduation we had lost touch he was working in north india and leaves a family and child behind and what is really concerning is that he developed symptoms at 3:30 on saturday saturday 3:30 he lived in alabad in uttar pradesh in north india they tried to arrange for hospital or at least oxygen could get him oxygen at 10:30 pm so morning he developed the shortness of breath uh, he was dead by the morning this is how rapidly the uh, the disease is striking so this is of course very very some and very concerning why are the uh, social distancing measures the lockdown i believe that now there are curfews at night i believe that the social distancing are happening but i think there is a lot of damage that is happening in the meantime and ivermectin is a very important thing to do at this time so before i start answering the questions i want to just show the situation in india with the graphs as well <clears throat> so this is drbean.com and then here this is the vaccine distribution and if you see here india is at this time one dose 7.8% two doses are fully vaccinated 1.2% not anything significant so those who continue to say that somehow it is the vaccine's fault or somehow vaccine is not doing it are incorrect because the vaccine is really not given significantly yet this is the cases in india and if you see here this was actually becoming plateaued and then total cases have started going up and this is what is concerning the rapidity with which the um, spike is occurring and the cases are active cases now about 2 million and of course the deaths are following that as well so this is the sad situation here i have linked these before as well this was a doctor from flccc who has shared this this is the per state uh, usually this so this is this this is the chart that shows indian state and their individual cases so you can click on a state then you can go here and say see more details and it will open up this kind of a graph and here are the active cases that you can see these are confirmed cases and then recovered and so on so this over here is maharashtra and this is uttar pradesh and even in the uttar pradesh so we used to talk about uttar pradesh with lots of pride that they've been using avramectin and that has been very helpful but if you see here even in uttar pradesh the numbers are going up so now was it because the avramectin is not working or the, it is not available or people are not using it or doctors are not giving it i do not know exactly what's going on but not a good situation at all and the population is 1.38 billion so i think that social distancing and those measures masks will have to be done before it is fully in control so with this let's answer some questions as well um zigzag thank you very much so he is actually a very active cool bean and uh, of course it is a sad thing to see neepa gandhi thank you very much for your super chat thank you for all the knowledge you have imparted this is from to spin dr neepa gandhi uh, dr neepa gandhi thank you very much for your continued support and journey with us and i love the name tooth bean uh, we got to figure out some way of figuring out how to stop this and stall this in india what are the what are the states or cities or communities that are open to ivermectin can we start that ivermectin is a cheap drug uh, in the us it's still Two hundred dollars, and then after using good RX, it goes down to twenty-six dollars. I believe in India, it is easily available. I do not know nowadays shortage or not, but for cheaper. So, can we sponsor some of this and maybe give it to a whole community and and help? So, let me see some questions here. 
So Vidroid Vijayan says, can remdesivir cause a mutation of the virus? So remdesivir is an incorrect or a fake material for the virus. So when, when the virus is building itself or the virus's enzymes are building new viruses, remdesivir sneaks in and becomes a, a kind of a, a fake it looks like bricks for the virus or RNA material for the virus or amino acids, but it is actually not the correct amino acid. So that is how virus replication is disrupted. And the new, imagine how a house is being built, but only one part of one wall is built and then it is stopped. So for remdesivir to somehow mutate the virus is not possible. Virus, uh, we have done this discussion many, many times in the past as well. It is viruses change their their they mutate all the time. Coronavirus mutates as well. Its mutation rate is low because it has proof readers in it. But in a person who has taken some medicine and the viruses are mutating as well, there may be a chance of one variant of the virus that can escape that little uh, drug, and if it becomes bigger, it replicates more in the person, then it can be shed as well. But that is a uh, so far has not seen with remdesivir. I'm sure that it might occur in one or two people. So far, so good. Not much worry there. But the on a technical grounds, the possibility is there. Yes. Nick says, uh, and I should say, Doctor Ariza, smoking increases risk of death if infected by six times. Absolutely, smoking is one of the higher um, risk factor. Ding Ding says, question, roxithromycin antibiotic help COVID lungs? So look, antibiotics would help for sure because they would prevent or they would manage secondary infections that happen when any other infection occurs and severely occur. So the drugs are useful antibacterial for bacterial infections. Although for ivermectin, uh, the original study and then Dr. Alam from Bangladesh had used doxycycline with ivermectin. Similarly, I think azithromycin has been used as well with hydroxy. Then people dropped hydroxy. Doctors stopped giving hydroxy, but they kept giving azithromycin by itself. Th that is why these two antibacterials have become more common. It seems like somehow azithro potentiates the effect of hydroxy and doxy, doxycycline, potentiates the effect of ivermectin. And the freedom with which I'm using the word ivermectin, I think I'm going to get my channel black, blocked. But I think as long as our voice can be heard, some people will benefit from this. Some people's lives will be saved. Even saving one life is worth this channel getting blocked. This is why even after talking about, let's call ivermectin, lufimectin or, or others, I'm still calling it ivermectin. I know that YouTube's algorithm picks up the, they, trans, they take the, um, they translate it or what is that? They transcribe it. They get the English part of it and then they do scans on it so i know they're going to figure it out but i think that this is this is how it is when we are blo blocked we are blocked we'll see it at that time um nick ariza says it's amazing again nick is a physician it's amazing how in vitro studies are becoming the gold standard over more credible in vivo studies very scientific yeah so and nick you're correct there are a couple of things it is correct that we used to start with the a hunch or some literature saying this molecule may work from our ancient knowledge in the books or somebody thinking that this molecule is useful or computer saying this is useful then from there going to the cells in vitro that is outside the body and then going to the animals and then finally reaching humans and that is the chain of the testing and when something is working in humans you accept that instead of going back and saying well the dose was high in the cells well, aren't you seeing millions of people using ivermectin and, and becoming um, cured as well? Or be, uh, less, less severe disease with ivermectin in a lot of cases. For example, the Egyptian study, 74% prophylaxis success. So it's not 100%, but it is pretty, pretty good. The other thing that, Nick, that has failed is uh, there is a friend of ours, Steve, who has been uh, trying to figure out very active in trying to figure out in the US, how do we improve the situation where we are just stuck with nothing but vaccines and nothing else is being 
allowed, if they can give EUA, for example, to vaccine, why can't they give an EUA to ivermectin and so on? So he is very actively working on that. And he had sent a note over the weekend, and I really thought it was correct. And he was saying that uh, somehow this pandemic has shown how the evidence-based medicine is not working. So when, when we have evidence and when authorities don't want to use it, then they fall back to the dose was too high or this is this is an, not a high quality study or so on. They make those excuses. And when the evidence is not even sufficiently there or it shows some damage as well, but they want to prove it, then they simply say this is the only solution we got. So it's just, uh, it was interesting. So uh, Nipa Gandhi, that is what I believe that India believes in ivermectin. We got to figure out what is it that ivermectin is not very prevalent at this time or why are the cases going up? Okay, so, <clears throat> so Joan says, or Juan says, have you seen an Oxford study saying that Pfizer and Moderna vaccines have more clotting events than AstraZeneca? Is it pharma wars? So, uh, Joan or Juan, thank you very much. And I discussed this this uh, Friday, I believe, that clotting, uh, higher rate of clotting or something. Interestingly, your statement tells me what I thought the trick they were playing. In that, in that um, uh, release, press release, what they had done was AstraZeneca, number one, I am still baffled, curious, and I'm actually uh, doing some research. And the curiosity is, check America for a second. We have Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson. Moderna and Pfizer, I think, above 50, 60 million doses each. Johnson & Johnson, about 6 million, 6.8 million doses administered, six cases of the clotting found, one person, one unfortunate female, young female died, another was in hospital, and they stopped, they paused. So if they're so sensitive that six, and it is a good thing that they're sensitive, that six people be, had the clotting issue, there may be more, but six are the ones that got reported, got, that got hospitalized, one died, one critically ill, and they paused it. How is it possible if the Moderna and Pfizer with the similar rate will have been going on for 50 million or 60 million. So there is something that does not add, add up. And I need to do some research before I say it is wrong or it is right. Number one. Number two, actually, the numbers are, according to that study, the numbers are that uh, Pfizer and Moderna, 1.4 clots per million and AstraZeneca 1.5 per million. But the way they showed it was they did a division. So they said out of all divided by 1.5 or out of all divided by 1.4. And they use that number, the resulting number, as a times. So they said, for example, Moderna and Pfizer, the risk of clotting with COVID is 10 times higher than by Moderna or Pfizer and eight times higher by uh, AstraZeneca, which actually means AstraZeneca is more causing more clotting. But because you read 10 and you, you read eight, your takeaway immediately becomes, and that happened to me as well, is that, well, these messenger RNA are causing more uh, damage. So that is the devious thing that is happening at this time. And I kept uh, saying, and I'm saying it once more, just accept the fact that this is happening and then figure out a solution. Solution is easy for this one. So don't run from it. Find a solution. Attach the solution to this. Create a protocol for the vaccine administration and the follow-up and go from there. So um, please, I have done this um, discussion this Friday, I believe. Rajesh says, maybe a future Telegram channel for registered cool beans. Sure. I have done this Discord as well, although I did not get on Discord and very actively started working. I would start working on it, but uh, Discord is it. OK, so let's continue. I want to make sure that we can answer some questions. Um, so 
So there is one more question about Israel here. Annabelle says, Israel study found higher variant among fully vaccinated people who tested positive. Is this the reason behind the Sergemix vaccine rollout? And this is what I think is uh, going on incorrectly in media and by the research workers. Research workers, this research, Annabelle, I actually talked about this as well last week. It is very important if you can uh, kind of listen to that as well. I think 20 minutes or so. Here is the important part that the researchers tweeted and is not in the, in the study. What they said was, and I'm going to share my screen, and I was actually on, on technical grounds. You can say they have a, they did what they said they are going to do. And then you can also kind of feel upset that why did they do it? Here is what they did. They said, here is dose one. This is dose two. Then this is, let's say, I believe 14 days after dose one, 14 day after dose one, and then seventh day, or was it seven here and 14 here, some number here, seventh day after dose two. This is Pfizer we are talking about. So let's say this is where Pfizer says that after the second day of the dose two, we, we are fully vaccinated, correct? We are fully protected. Here is the bad part in this whole thing. The, and this is the part they tweeted. I had to go research it, find the tweet, and then attach the tweet in that study and discuss it. The tweet was this, that after 14th day of the second dose, there was no, no infection. And what they said was the actual study showed that from the seventh day of the second dose till the 14th day, the just one week is the time during which they found that South African variant was more common in people who were getting infected after the vaccine. And they showed it in their study that from 14th till here, was actually the UK variant or B117 that was more prevalent. But this nobody cared for because that is the primary kind of virus at this time. So they said, yeah, fine, we don't care for this one. We know this already. Well, Wuhan 1 or SARS-CoV-2 wild type was defeated by B117. That is important news too. But the whole world focused here and what they missed in telling is that after 14th day, there was actually no further infection. So when you read the author's tweets, they tweeted back and they have a point number six in their tweet where they said, but make sure that you understand that after 14th day, there was no infection and you should go ahead and get vaccinated. So they talk, talked about this window, just this window and confuse the whole world. And the media and the, it became such a cycle that even now, Annabelle, you have this question as well. None of your fault. This is how it was presented. It's just, I don't like it. I don't like these games at this time when we are all stuck with this thing. Uh, Dennis and Janice Tegu says, Dr. Mubin, why didn't the pharmaceuticals create a vaccine in the old way? Why messenger RNA? So messenger RNA has been a beautiful new technology, which can actually create designer vaccines for cancers especially. So that, plus it is very rapid to make. So I think the technology was there. They could make it and they made it. They did a trial, trial it worked and that's how it went. I actually like this technology because it is really flexible and it is really rapid to work with it. Anubhav says, could you look at the double mutant in India? Doctors are saying that the people are being reinfected rapidly and health workers are becoming severe even after two shots of vaccine. So yes, I would look at this. However, I'll give you an example. A similar thing, but at a lower scale is happening in Pakistan as well. So one of the uh, doctors from one of the hospitals, she re reached out to me over this weekend and she was saying that people are getting vaccine uh, infected after the vaccine. So I probed a little more. And I said, so tell me, 
fully vaccinated, half vaccinated. And she said that most of those are between the first and second dose. And so it is also important. And, and none again, it's not human's faults that this is happening. I got my first dose about, what, 10 days or so ago. I feel protected, although I know I'm not. I psychologically feel that I have the, the vaccine. But I know that I still have to get the second dose and then I have to go for another, I think, seven or 14 days. Then there is some chance, let's say 94% efficacy, even then it is not 100%. So for me to think this at 10th day after knowing all this is wrong. So now think about it, somebody who doesn't know all of this and gets the dose and then thinks that they are protected. So that is one of the reasons that there are spikes. Now, could you look at, but your basic question to look at the double mutant, I actually have taken that, that, that down as my uh, to-do to go over the double mutation and talk about it. So I'll write it down here again, the double mutant in India. And now talking about things to do, this week is a little tough for me. Uh, there are going to be three days when I would not be able to do this morning discussion. One day is, so this week is the Dr. Tess Laurie's International Conference for Ivermectin, the Bird Panels uh, International Conference. I am the chairman of that uh, conference. And so I have to do the opening and then I have to orchestrate the conference itself for two days. So those two days, I would start working on the conference six in the morning till 10 my time. So this nine will be in that time. So I won't be able to attend here. I would request you to attend there. Secondly, there is one more day where they want to do a rehearsal. And that would also go on from six in the morning till the maybe nine, 10. So these three days, I will not be able to come live at this time because I will be one rehearsing or rehearsing and then uh, chairing the conference. So thank you very much for bringing it up. And I thought this is a good time to discuss that as well. But I, I have these topics in my on my plate to work on. Nick, if someone gets an mRNA vaccine, but then wants to get the Novavax vaccine, Will the body react to the Novavax vaccine in the same way it would if the person had never got the mRNA vaccine? Yes. So once you have the infection or the, or the vaccine, any vaccine, your body is now aware of the part, at least if infection, then the whole virus. And in some other vaccine, then part of the virus, the spike protein part. Body is aware of it and would mount a response to it. So let's say if there are two people today, one gets the vaccine Novavax for the first time. So I'm going to draw as well. So let's say there are two people. So let's see if I can make two people <laughs> rapidly. So this is people one and this is people two, person two. I'm just being. So let's say there are two persons. This person A and this is the person B. Person A had let's say some vaccine Moderna or other. So they had some vaccine one already first dose. This person had no, no vaccine before. Now you give Novavax. This person's body, their immune system is already aware of the spike protein. So will Novavax would act as the second dose. It would act as a booster. In this person, when you give Novavax for the first time, that would just act as the first dose and priming the immune system in two to one to two weeks. So this person, one to two weeks, their immune system would start building up. This person, within 24 hours, their immune system would start responding and further building up with the Novavax. So that is how the difference will be. Christine says you are in the fatigable Dr. Bean, thank you very much. This happened in this uh, um, pandemic that I just jumped up and I said, I have to do this. So really the energy and the, the I think energy is not sufficient. There has to be an intent. There has to be a motivation. Otherwise these things cannot happen. We're going on for a year. So that motivation came from seeing if I could help contribute towards knowledge, which can help people. Uh, GB says, can this clotting occur after A, GB? What is the next part after A? Uh, meanwhile, I'll go and uh, answer another question. Kushali Parekh says, after how many days 
does positive patient become non-infective in current variant? Non-infective. Are you saying uh, non-contagious or becomes recovered? So look the recovery or non-contagious. So let's look at it. So short answer, everybody has a different uh, immune system. So their body's response is different. So not a single window, a single day cannot be given. So let's say in some people, what happens is they get the infection here on day one. And then within five, six days, their body starts making antibodies. And within 10 days or so, the virus is cleared. Virus is cleared and their antibodies would continue for some time. This is normal. However, I have seen patients where even after months, they still have virus RT-PCR coming up positive. And I have seen patients where after six, seven days, RT-PCR is negative. So it depends that upon the person's immune system. Scarlett Monahan says, could you also look at the super variant of the COVID-19 virus in Brazil as a combination of 18 different mutations, including the so-called Brazil, British, and South African variant? I could look at that. Um, so, super <clears throat> okay. Puya says, good afternoon, Dr. Bean. Good afternoon, Puya. Puya, I know that I think you are a research worker or a doctor and research worker. What are your latest studies? You were doing a study to show the presence of antibodies for a longer period of time. Are you guys doing more studies to show or are you continuing with that study? What is up with your research? What is happening? Fran Crook says, Chinese coronavirus is the only traditional vax using the deactivate, deactivated virus. How does it safe, safety compare with the other vaxes? It is, I actually like deactivated viruses. And if you go out in the, in the field and you start listening to people, there are all kind of uh, theories. Somebody says, I don't like the full uh, vaccinated, uh, inactivated. Some say they like it. I like for, uh, inactivated, plus I like neutralizing both. And uh, also, China's CoronaVax is not the only one. Chinese plus uh, India's own vaccine is also inactivated virus vaccine. Plant Kingdom says, can a defici deficiency in vitamin D compromise an elderly individual with the mRNA vaccines? Should such an individual first raise their vitamin D level? So I think the basic answer is going to be the same. And that is that if a person doesn't have the right vitamin D level, for example, I didn't have the right vitamin D levels, then they would not behave correctly, they, their immune system, to any of the infections. It would be dysregulated response. That response is similarly for the vaccine as well, that it will be dysregulated. So if they have vitamin D correct levels, it is good. However, in case of vaccine, the only safety is that even if the response is dysregulated, the vaccine is not just multiplying all the time in their body. So it would not just keep aggravating the situation. The only thing is maybe they would not develop as best a response as possible. So yes, having correct vitamin D levels are important at the same time taking vaccine at, and not waiting for the, what I've seen is that even after 10 to 20,000 units per day, it takes months to improve the vitamin D level. So maybe get the vaccine and keep getting the vitamin D uh, supplements as well. Nitin Agrawal, which vaccine is faster in production of antibodies? They're all the same because the it is not the vaccine that decides the production of antibodies rate. It is the body's immune system's response time that would decide. And we all respond differently. This is why some people develop cytokine storm and some don't. This is why some people develop allergies and others don't. It is our body's response that does it. And everyone has different response. This is true 
I know that some folks are now going to put a comment that, hey, the dose should matter. Yes, this is true. If you give a very large dose, there would be an immediate response and the person can even die from that. But that will be innate arms response. That has nothing to do with the antibody production. Antibody production would still take whatever, five days to 14 days normal. And that depends upon the person. Mili J, J says, I'm so pleased I found your YouTube last uh, last year, doctor. You've helped immensely to educate us in COVID. Thank you very much. And that was the point. I think it has uh, it has worked. Angel Perez says, question, any vaccine recommendation for long haulers? So there have been a couple of long haulers who said that we took the vaccine in the US and we have felt better. Now, at that time when the comments came in, there was Pfizer first and then Moderna. Johnson & Johnson had not yet launched. So that means they were talking about one or the other. I didn't specifically ask them which one. So I would think that it is one of these two. Generally, I think all vaccines should help if there is a resident remnant virus sitting somewhere dormant and the vaccine comes in and kind of boosts the immune system and helps against it, that may be useful. But then any vaccine can do that, considering its own side effect on the side. Fruyandis says, and my apologies for the name mess up. Um, uncle caught wild type COVID last year and recovered. This year caught South African variant, positive to antigen, IgG and IgM, but within a week all came negative, but still unwell. How come? So this is what is happening that within a week, these all became negative because the body was aware of the virus before and body was able to react to it. Now they are unwell, maybe because there is some remnant virus still sitting in there and body is still trying to clear it out or is not able to clear it out yet. So I think you've got to give some more days and see how it goes. It could be a long haul state, but it is a very short period yet. Liza, thank you very much for the reminder. I just responded to her. Uh, Ali G says, can someone take the AstraZeneca vaccine while taking aspirin or he should stop aspirin before going for the vaccine first or second dose? So um, my wife and I have been taking vaccine for other reasons, sometimes, oh, sorry, aspirins. Sometimes we just take it, uh, baby aspirins for our, um, you know, age need, no, no uh, comorbidities. However, I thought it was not necessary, especially after AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson-like vaccines, to stop aspirin. It, I think, helps from reducing the chances for clotting, or even if the clotting is occurring, reducing the intensity of clotting. So at least within my family, I did not stop. Kushali says, is it true that vaccine prevents severity because in India, people are dying and severe even after second dose of vaccine? So again, yes, it is true. The uh, At least for the US, Moderna and Pfizer had claimed that 100% efficacy from hospital and death was achieved with the vaccines. Now, what is the AstraZeneca's number? I do not know. Secondly, what is the state of the person after the second dose? Did they, did they get fully vaccinated? Meaning, did it get complete? As we can see from Israel, that Pfizer, even after seven days, when they say we are fully vaccinated, completed, were fully protected. Even then, people were getting infected for one seven days window, which I thought the result of the study from Israel should have been, it seems like that seven days is not the right window. Extend it to 14 days, ask people to be careful for 14 days instead of seven days, and then there are zero infections. So there may be something over here as well to say instead of two doses, and then seven days after the dose, assuming it is full protection, maybe it should be 14 days. Maybe it should be 21 days. Ask the person to be a little more careful. So I think there is a uh, problem with, with being careful as well. I talked about myself so many times nowadays when I go out, I think I have the vaccine and it's only 10 days. I'm not protected. So uh, this could be one of the reasons. 
Maru says, and thank you very much for the super chat. Which day is the Dr. Tesla conference happening and can we attend to it? Link. So I believe it is on 23rd and 4th, this, this weekend. So 24th and 5th, she wanted to do it over the weekend so people can be free to give time to it. And I believe 23rd or 20, uh, I think tomorrow, one of these days, my, my uh, executive assistant knows the day when we have the rehearsal as well. But I remember it that it is 24, 25 UK uh, time. I would ask her that if there is a link and it's, if it is uh, open to general public or not, I would ask her an update. So a uh, very good question and very common question. Uh, is aspirin going to limit antibody production? They said to avoid NSAIDs. Think about it for a second. We take aspirin very commonly and we still get <laughs> sore throat. We get infections. If you get a wound, sometimes it gets little infected as well. Aspirin is not a potent anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressant. It cannot really do this. It's a very mild, I mean, such mild thing that in the US it is over the counter. So for it to actually suppress the immune system to the point that you have a vaccine and it is not working is not going to work. However, um, <clears throat> when I was doing house job and I uh, administered some medicine to someone and gave this medicine and they said, please do take this medicine. And my medical officer asked me, she said, ask them also not to drink Coke. So I wrote, don't drink Coke during this time. But I was confused at what is that part of the medicine. So I asked him afterwards, I said, why did you say not to drink Coke? There is nothing to do with Coke, this, uh, the problem and the prescription. He said, the thing is this, if you don't tell the patient to do something more, they feel that what you are saying is just useless. There is no placebo effect in it yet. So when you say don't drink Coke, now they're going to say, I am not allowed to drink Coke during this time while I'm taking this medicine. And their confidence in the medicine becomes more. So that was his way. And he transferred that knowledge to me. Similarly, when we say don't take aspirin, uh, people become, oh, man, OK, so if I don't take aspirin, then the vaccine is going to work correctly. That is kind of a placebo effect. If you look at the uh, CDC, they say that, hey, after the vaccine, if you get some side effects, you can take them. So even they use that placebo effect. Aspirin is not so strong to counter a vaccine or an infection's uh, outcome. Still, if it makes you feel better, if your doctor says it, um, do as they are saying. Smith says contraindications for taking vaccine. So various vaccines have various uh, side effects. The important thing is, number one, some vaccines can cause severe allergic reactions or anaphylaxis. So if somebody is known to have allergic reactions, they should not take a vaccine and severe allergic reactions. Even then, there are people who actually never knew that they had severe allergic reactions and they are responding to vaccines in a negative way. That is one. And secondly, I think considering Netherlands situation where uh, 20 folks died, and that is if somebody is too old or their body is too fragile, it's not about old either. Maybe their body is fragile because of some uh, comorbidity or their GIT being upset or something where, which, for example, let's say I already am old. My heart is weak. I cannot take uh, my heart cannot take extra pressure of pumping extra blood uh, or maintaining the blood pressure with the low fluid volumes and you give me vaccine, vaccine causes diarrhea. Imagine if it does that. And now I am low blood volume. Heart has a stress to increase the circulation by pumping more and heart can go in a heart attack. So it really is the patient's history as well. That is why you should talk with your doctor before you take the vaccine and get your clearance to say healthy enough to go get the vaccine. GB says, can P100 gas masks plus face shield plus surgical mask protect me in high risk zones? I think that yes, um, for sure. Again, uh, saying 100% protection, I cannot guarantee it. But these are the kind of measures that, that are used. 
Hashim Raza says, question, my mom got COVID, checked by doctor. She was given remdesivir five days, 12th day. Now she's feeling well. My question is, where will virus go from lungs after some days? And will she can, can get it again? So virus is destroyed. So what happens is once a virus is and arrived in our body and it starts destruction, what it does is the virus goes into the cell. From the cell, it divides. So let me share my screen and draw it. <laughs> so here, let's say here is a cell. Virus goes into the cell. In the cell, it tries to make more baby viruses. And then those viruses inside the cell, they are formed. They come out of the cell. Now, <clears throat> sometimes in the process of coming out, they can destroy the cell. Sometimes cell is OK, but cell presents the virus and it pieces the virus in its surface, which causes our immune system to eventually kind of kill the cell as well. Now, these viruses which come out, they would then enter the next cell. And this is how they will continue to work. Now, what happens is during this time, our immune system cells would find out that, oh, there is a virus in the body and they would start killing the cells that are making more viruses. Plus, they would pick up the viruses like macrophages and neutrophils and dendritic cells they, and B cells. They would pick up the virus, eat them up, digest them and destroy them. So virus doesn't go somewhere. It is destroyed by the body. So when she is feeling well, it means that the virus has been destroyed. Can she become unwell? I, I don't know yet. Sometimes people become long haulers. But if she has become well, the symptoms are gone. Oxygen levels are back. Fever is gone. Chest x-ray is clear. Then in theory, the virus has been destroyed and removed from the body. Shinji Speaks says, got my ivermectin last friday from india i gave my 308 pound cousin two tablets as prophylaxis after 48 hours two more hope that's correct so uh, the best way to do this is 300 pound to uh, kilograms so let's see alexa what is 308 pound to kilograms 308 pounds is about 139.7 kilograms so 100 and 39.7 so let's say 140 kilogram which is almost double of normal 70 72 kilogram we use right so now if you take 140 and multiply it with 0.2 so that would become 280 so 280 or 28 milligrams so tw two tablets of 12 milligram are about 24 which is kind of in that ballpark so from a dosage point of view it is correct but again history and all that, I cannot say they should be given this. Doctor should do it. But from a dose point of view, this dose seems to be correct. And we we have uh, another four or five minutes, and I have my second meeting, so I'm going to beg leave. Uh, Lakshmi says, risk of thrombocytopenia from COVID vaccine for someone who had dengue before. I cannot say that. That risk is still not very clear that who are at risk. Sometimes they say it is the women 18 to 48 which is where they have seen more of this sometimes they say contraceptive use sometimes they say smokers so they are not very clear yet so because of that it is difficult for me to make a, a hypothesis or conjecture for what it is Anubhav says, why do adenovirus-based vaccines have lower efficacy as compared to messenger RNA? That is a good question. Uh, and maybe there, there are theories. Nobody knows exactly. One of the theory is that because adenoviruses are more commonly known to our body, although we are using chimpanzee adenovirus, even then the adenovirus structure is something that our body knows. And adenovirus lives in it. It's a, it's a virus for common cold. So we actually know this virus and we understand it. And so because of that, as soon as the virus arrives in our body as the vaccine dose, our immune system is already upset with it and saying, you know what, I'm going to kill you. And because of that, the adenovirus-based vaccines have a lesser chance, even the very first time, to be able to mount a greater response because the immune system just attacks them right away. That is the theory. 
still these do produce good results as well. But in theory, because our body knows them, uh, it kind of attacks them. Messenger RNA particles are not known by our body before, just like SARS-CoV-2 itself is not known. So messenger RNA viruses, uh, sorry, particles are working better. Again, theory. Morphine one says, do, does aspirin reduce blood platelets? And if yes, then by how much percent? So that is a very good question. Here is what it does. And please realize that people who are taking aspirin, you know that they have to take it every day. That is because aspirin cannot forever just destroy the platelets. What it does is this. Aspirin causes the platelets that it works on. So let's say I have normally we have 150,000 to 450,000 platelets in our one milliliter of blood. So imagine there are some platelets in my body and I took aspirin and aspirin came in and it destroyed their enzymes that help with the platelet function. How does it destroy them? It gets stuck in them. It's like it's something that gets stuck in a machine that is working. And now that we say in the US throwing a mon monkey wrench in some, some machine. So it throws a monkey wrench in the, the cyclooxygenase enzymes. The result is that the platelet cannot function correctly. Now this is irreversible, but platelets life is also going to be finished soon and new platelets will be formed. And this is why we need more aspirin because now the new are formed and they also need to be stopped. So plus when you give aspirin, it would not stop all of them. If, if uh, think about it for a second, if you gave aspirin and all of the platelets stopped, then we would immediately end up in the thrombocytopenic type state. All the platelets will be there. So it would not be thrombocytopenia, but the function will be gone. It would be like there is thrombocytopenia and the pe person would start bleeding. This is why these drugs, the clotting drugs, have a tendency to cause bleeding. But aspirin usually does not do it because in the regular therapeutic doses, it only takes a smaller percentage. So let's say if this is a pool of platelet in our body, aspirin would probably just take a small percentage and make it not functional. But then our body would make it again that day or the next day. And then we have to take aspirin again and then body would make more. So that is how it works. And thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, let's do one more question and then I break. It gives me five minutes break before the next meeting. So let's take this as a last question for today. Carolyn Hedgekal says, I had all gastro confirmed COVID was double masking and only in public two times in the previous two weeks. What do you think is the likelihood that I caught it from incoming groceries, fomites? So of course you caught it from something. And if that is the primary um, vehicle for the virus to arrive in your uh, home and then to, to attach with you, then possible. Usually groceries have uh, boxes, cardboard boxes that are water absorbent or they are porous and usually porous surfaces do not carry virus do not let the virus stay valid for long period of time because they absorb the water on the other hand plastic surfaces or plastic bags these can be the one that can carry or keep the virus valid for a longer period of time similarly if you have a packaging that has that cellophane type uh, surface on it which is plastic surface on which that can also have virus sitting on that for a longer time. Plus, if somebody had dirty hands and they, um, you know, they touched the the packaging, and the the load on the hands was of the virus was more. So it is possible, but I can't say with uh, certainty which one was it. So with this, uh, thank you very much for today. I would beg leave for now. Please like, subscribe, and share. Maybe it would save somebody's life, and maybe you will become part of that. And then uh, if you would like to support this work, there are three links in the description. One, if you don't want to use PayPal, you can buy me a coffee. They don't use PayPal. The second one is you can become a patron. And the third one is that if you like, you can support this channel directly as well. So thank you very much. I would see some of you this evening and others tomorrow. Stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.